Hello and welcome to another retrospective video of an iconic adventure game franchise. You can find a lot of videos about adventure games in my channel, like the full history videos about Space Quest, King's Quest, Gabriel Knight, Lizu Sweet Larry, Loom, Grim Fandango, and many more. You can also find a two-hour documentary on the history of the genre with the rise and fall of the adventure games. If you like the content of my channel, please consider supporting it by subscribing and turning on the notifications for it. You can also consider supporting me by becoming a member of my YouTube channel. There is one membership tier and you will have a lot of benefits like exclusive updates on upcoming videos, you get to watch each new video earlier, you get to decide the topic of upcoming videos and also member exclusive giveaways that will follow. We have covered in my channel a lot of adventure game franchises from the two key players of the industry, Sierra Online and LucasArts Games. However, during the Zandra's heyday in the 90s, there were a lot of productions from smaller studios. Some of those games evolved into franchises with multiple sequels. The series we are going to cover today is not only typical of the golden age of adventure games, but also of the times that Europe was playing a key role in video game development. Simon the Sorcerer is an adventure game franchise developed by the British studio Adventuresoft. The company started as Horrorsoft, specializing in horror games, but then decided to create a cartoony point-and-click adventure game to capitalize on the success of franchises like Monkey Island. Simon the Sorcerer was inspired mainly by the Discord series of novels by Terry Pratchett. In fact, Adventuresoft wanted to create adventure games based on Discworld, but changed their plans to creating their own IP when they failed to secure the rights. Simon, the protagonist, is based on the main character from Discworld, Rincewind, and Monkey Island's famous wannabe pirate, Guybrush Thripwood. There are multiple games in the series, each with its own legacy and quality level as we will see later on. In fact, the franchise continues even today, even though substantially changed. The first game in the series was Simon the Sorcerer, a point-and-click adventure game developed and released by Adventuresoft for the MS-DOS and the Amiga in 1993. The game focuses around Simon, a young boy and his dog Chippy. One day Simon finds his dog playing with an old book in the attic. As he browses through the pages, he comes across a spell which he reads out loud. A portal suddenly appears which Chippy enters. Simon follows him and ends up in another world dressed in a wizard's robe. The world seems to be in a parallel universe in which magic and monsters coexist along with modern items and elements. There, Simon embarks on a mission to become a wizard and rescue the mage Calypso from the evil sorcerer Sordid. The game has a lot of references to pop culture and parodies of famous fantasy novels and stories like Discworld, The Chronicles of Narnia, Rapunzel or The Lord of the Rings. It plays as a pure point-and-click adventure game where the player controls the movement of the protagonist by using the mouse and performs actions via verbal commands such as look at, talk to and give with objects that are picked up being placed into an inventory. The user interface resembles a lot of the established scam engine found in LucasArts adventure games and especially Monkey Island, which was among the main inspiration of the series. The game primarily involves talking to people for information, including hints to solving puzzles or acquiring items, and using the correct items to solve puzzles during the course of it. Simon the Sorcerer was developed by the Woodroff family, as the father Mike Woodroff was the director and producer of the game, whereas his son Simon was responsible for the story and puzzle design. Alan Brigman was the technical director and co-producer as he collaborated with Mike to create the game's engine, Adventure Graphic Operating System, or AGOS. This engine was more of a scripting language resembling SCAM which facilitated the development of Simon the Sorcerer and enabled the team to focus on the gameplay and story without worrying about the technical aspects. Adventuresoft was based in Birmingham of England whereas the art team was located in a small studio at Newcastle held by Paul Drummond who was the lead artist. Simon the Sorcerer was originally released on floppy disks in 1993 for the Amiga and MS-DOS. It was re-released in 1994 for the Amiga CD32 and PC CD-ROM with an enhanced soundtrack and full voice support. The game received critical acclaim upon its release with praise for its humor, 
characters and visuals. Its linear nature and the maze-like traveling between locations was criticized. It sold 600,000 units, performing better in Europe mostly because of the superior Amiga version and its large user base in countries like United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy and elsewhere. Its success established Adventsusoft as an important software house for the adventure game genre and development for the sequel began right after Simon the Sorcerer 1 release. Simon the Sorcerer 2, The Lion, The Wizard and The Wardrobe is an adventure game created by Adventsusoft and released in 1995 for the MS-DOS and the sequel to Simon the Sorcerer. The game's title is a parody of the Chronicles of Narnia book The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe. The game takes place a few years after the end of the first game. The evil sorcerer Sordid is banished from the land with the help of Simon, but his cursed spellbook somehow finds its way into the hands of a villager named Rand. Rand spends his nights reading the book and studying its spells which make his farmer father furious. He grabs the book from Rand and burns it, accidentally summoning Sordid's spirit. Rand begs Sordid to let him be his apprentice and the wizard agrees to make him his apprentice in exchange for his help in Sordid's revenge on Simon. Together, they rebuild Sordid's lair at the Valley of Doom where they prepare the ritual for the wizard's resurrection. To do so, they needed to sacrifice Simon and to achieve it they created a magical wardrobe in order to capture him and bring him to the game's world. As was the case of the first game, Simon the Sorcerer 2 is full of pop culture references and parodies of famous franchises like The Chronicles of Narnia, Discord and the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Simon Woodruff wrote the entire story starting his first drafts right before the release of the first game of the series. The game plays exactly like the previous one, with the player moving Simon around locations in the game, interacting with objects and other characters at each side. The company used again the signature scripting tool of Adventsusoft, the AGOS or Adventure Graphic Operating System. The visuals and backgrounds especially were initially hand-drawn in line form, then scanned and digitally colored. Character animations were created in Autodesk Animator, a powerful professional tool of the 90s. Simon the Sorcerer was initially released in floppy disks with copy protection that was based on answering questions referring to the game's manual. The later CD-ROM enhanced version dropped the copy protection system and brought full talky support. There was also an Amiga port under development but was cancelled after the decline of the platform's popularity during the mid and late 90s. The Amiga port was finally released in 2000 by RuneSoft, who acquired the rights and released it in CD-ROM. Simon the Sorcerer 2, The Lion, The Wizard and The Wardrobe was also praised by fans and critics upon its release. Its sales were more or less equal to the first game, selling more than half a million copies. Both of the first two Simon the Sorcerer games have been ported in recent years to multiple platforms, including mobile gaming such as iOS and Android devices. The success of the first two games spawned the Simon the Sorcerer franchise, which included spin-off games. In 1998, a Simon the Sorcerer pinball game was released, and the same year a collection of Simon-themed puzzle games was also produced by Adventsusoft titled Simon the Sorcerer Puzzle Pack. The next adventure game of the series took some time before it was released as it faced a lot of issues during development and marked a change that would have great impact on the franchise. Simon the Sorcerer 3D was the third game in the Simon the Sorcerer series and the first to make the change from 2D to 3D graphics. It was developed by Adventsusoft and was released in 2002 for the Microsoft Windows. The story continues after the events of the previous game, Simon the Sorcerer 2, The Lion, The Wizard and The Wardrobe. During a lengthy introduction, the player learns that the body and soul of Simon the Sorcerer that were magically separated in the previous game somehow managed to join again. As Simon wakes up whole again, he immediately embarks on his new quest to reach the city of Polyganis and find his old friend and teacher, the Wizard Calypso. 
The typical point-and-click verb command interface was dropped as the game switched to a full 3D environment where Simon has to interact with objects, NPCs and manipulate the setting by utilizing inventory items. Since this is an early 3D game, you can see it hasn't aged that well, which is a true pity considering the initial plans for the third Simon the Sorcerer game as it was originally planned to be 2D. Adventure Soft, or better, Head First Productions, a new studio formed by the Woodrow family other management from the main company, began development right after the release of the second Simon the Sorcerer game, keeping the same engine and upgraded hand-drawn visuals. They had spent almost two years into development when their publisher, Microprose, that was owned by Hasbro Interactive, decided that they had no particular interest in releasing a 2D adventure. The studio had to drop the whole project and start from scratch utilizing a third-party 3D engine, Netimers. This tool, later rebranded to Gamebryo as it is known today, required a lot of time for the team to learn it, adding more development time to the already late game. By the time the game was ready, Microprose began pulled out of the project entirely and later on was acquired by Infogrames, leaving Adventures off with an almost finished game but with no one to publish it. It took them two more years before they managed to release it themselves in 2002. The reception was mixed, mainly due to the fact that the delay in its release made the game look outdated on the visual aspect when released. Still though, critics and fans praised the game's story, humor and gameplay as being faithful to the series. In retrospect, the change to 3D was a huge mistake, as Mike Goodroff has stated in later numerous interviews. The decline in popularity of the adventure game Zandra and a lot of financial issues from the studio side marked the later years of the franchise. Still, two more games followed, Simon the Sorcerer 4 and 5, released in 2007 and 9 respectively. They were both developed by another studio, Silver Style Entertainment, located in Germany. The focus was more to capitalize on the franchise's popularity in Germany and Europe in general rather than being true to the legacy of the first games. Both games scored poorly as they were simplistic and lacked the humor and wittiness that were associated with the franchise. In 2014, a new Simon the Sorcerer project was announced by the Irish studio Story Beasts. Titled Simon the Sorcerer 6 Between Worlds, the idea was to bring the franchise back to its British roots in traditional 2D style following the adventures of an older Simon in his 40s. The plans were to make the new game an episodic one, like the Telltale adventure games that were quite popular for a while. However, the Kickstarter campaign for the sixth Simon the Sorcerer game failed and the project was dropped. Recently though, in May of 2022, a new Simon the Sorcerer game was announced out of the blue. Simon the Sorcerer Origins is being developed by the Italian studio Small Thing Studios and is expected to release in 2023. The game will be a prequel to the original 1993 game. Simon will return for the first time to the world of the sorcerers, unleashing an ancient prophecy and gaining ancient magical powers. The first teaser trailer dropped alongside the announcement and shows a beautiful hand-drawn visual style but with animations that need a lot of polishing. However, this is pre-alpha footage of the actual game and more details are to be released on the story and voice actors. The game will be released for a multiple number of platforms like the PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully we will have more info soon on this new project and I will let you know with a new dedicated video. That was the full history of the Simon the Sorcerer series, a franchise born in Europe that showcased the booming gaming industry that the continent and especially the UK had back in the 90s. It had its ups and downs and faced a lot of issues as time passed by, but Simon was and is one of the most memorable and beloved characters from the golden age of adventure games. Do not forget to watch my many retrospectives on iconic franchises like Loom, King's Quest, Space Quest, Gabriel Knight and more. You can also find my tour documentary on the rise and fall of the genre. If you like the content of my channel, please consider supporting it by subscribing and turning on the notifications for it to know when a new video is up. 
You can also consider supporting me by becoming a member of my YouTube channel. There is one membership tier and you will have a lot of benefits like exclusive updates on upcoming videos, you get to watch each new video earlier, you get to decide the topic of upcoming videos and also member exclusive giveaways that will follow. We will have more adventure game videos soon. Thank you all for watching.